Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, thank uh, to Institute Misesa for inviting me, for having me here. It's great to see what they achieved and how many of you interested in Austrian economics came. Uh, it's always nice to be here with like-minded people. It always pumps new energy and motivation and inspiration into my veins. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here and I hope you'll have a great time during this conference. Uh, I'm from the uh, organization that is younger than Institute Misesa. We are around for, we've been around for 13 years, so I feel somewhat, somewhat young today here. Uh, and uh, I'm with the INES, which is Institute of Economic and Social Studies, the leading uh, economic and free market think tank uh, in Slovakia. Slovakia is the country which used to be called the European Tiger of, uh, like, on, on the continent. Uh, it is because all these uh, free market reforms that passed some decade ago uh, during the reformist government of Mikuláš Zurinda. So we were the first country and continent to introduce the flat tax, to introduce the Chilean-like pension scheme, uh, to introduce like very flexible labor code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this put us on the on the map of foreign investors. So plenty of foreign uh, investments came to Slovakia and made us richer and richer. We've been growing by seven years annually for several consecutive years. So we were one of the fastest, not one of the fastest, but we were the fastest growing economy in Europe for, uh, for many years. Uh, for instance, Slovakia is the biggest car manufacturer in the world, for those who don't know it. Uh, well, actually not Slovakia, but the uh, car manufacturers are producing the biggest number of cars produced per capita you know, in Slovakia. And we have plenty other businesses, especially in electronics, uh, and uh, also some new technologies and the stuff. So uh, Slovakia has got a pretty successful um, track record, but now, like, but not now, uh, but in 2006, everything changed when the leftist government uh, with the Social Democrats and Prime Minister Fico came to power, and they mm -hmm. have been around for three election terms already with a very short break of uh, one and a half year. Uh, Krakow is a wonderful city. I was here uh, last year with, with my kids, and I really have a very nice time here. Uh, yesterday, or actually today, in the in, in early morning, I arrived by a uh, by train, and I bought the ticket for bed coach. And I've got a when I when I entered the train, there was just seats, so there were no beds. So it is uh, something that the kind of uh, national uh, service providers uh, produces, so it is a kind of monopoly and the stuff. And you see, the, you see the results. You see that, like when you don't have the competition, so you have the worse services, higher prices, and everything. So this is actually the the situation we have now all around in every country. So it is a kind of product of intelligent design, uh, and uh, well, this is th th this is what state looks to me. Uh, we want, well, at least I think that people in this room want to change it to this. So this is something that is a kind of result of spontaneous order, the evolution, and this is what I call free market. And yet, like, we all know what is the first best. And all these big thinkers like uh, Adam Smith, David Hume, John Stuart Mill, Karl Menger, Ben, ben Bauer, Ludwig von Mises, uh, Friedrich August von Hayek, and all the others, so they showed us uh, what is the first best. But we still, like, don't have the first best, and why we don't have it? Like there are still like how to get, like how to get from here to there. This is a tough question, and this is what like plenty of people around the globe are, are, are challenged with this question. Uh, it is pretty tough also because those people who are in charge, who are with the power and uh, who are um, extracting the money from the system, obviously they want, they don't want to give up these uh, privileges. Uh, they use the people not as a kind of ultimate goal, but as a, a kind of resource for uh, rent seeking. And uh, yet here we are, we can either survive, like people can survive everything, like during the vast majority of the human history, people were starving. It, there was like no uh, food, lack of nutrition and everything. And yet we have managed to survive. So we can wait and, and, and survive somehow, or we can do something like wake up from the sleep 
and try to change something. And from my perspective, there are a few ways how we can change the things, how we can change the system and the situation, how we can, how we can reach the first best that, that, that was described by these big uh, thinkers, uh, thinkers of Austrian uh, School of Economics. First is politics. Uh, for many people, especially for Austrian economic, uh, economies, this is no go, obviously, because uh, otherwise, they, like, if they enter politics, they would legitimate the system they are challenging. So also for us, for Ines uh, members, this is a kind of no-go. Uh, we had many offers from politics, from politicians, but we, we have a kind of ethical code that we agreed uh, upon when we were incepting Ines, and uh, politics is no-go for us. Then th there is a, what I call a John Gold approach. Like many of you perhaps read the, the beautiful book uh, by Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged, and you can recall the main character, John Gold, the innovator, was, disruptor, uh, entrepreneur, a businessman who, who escaped from the, from the system, like he doesn't, he, he didn't want to have, uh, to, to have anything with state, so he, he somehow escaped from the, from the touch of the state. Uh, many other people do, did the same with him and they uh, kind of uh, constructed a parallel, uh, uh, parallel world. Actually, this is happening uh, already in many countries. For instance, in Czech Republic, in Slovak Republic, we have these parallel police. I don't know, is there anyone who heard of parallel police in Czech Republic or in, or in Slovakia? Yeah, there's a few of you. These are the communities that started as, a, as ethical hackers. Uh, now they are kind of also building their own parallel structures out of sight and out of touch of the state. So they are dealing with each other, they are doing businesses, they are buying things, providing services, uh, and they are using cryptocurrencies only. And uh, their goal is to build a kind of parallel structure uh, that is a kind of reflection to, 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 uh, to, the, to the ineffectiveness of the state, which is, which is really interesting and, and super exciting. Then we have the academia and we have organizations and, uh, who are um, educating people and trying to show uh, this first best. So you have plenty uh, super universities around the world. Well, let's mention the number one free market uh, university, uh, Universitat Francisco Marroquin in Guatemala, which now expanded uh, to Madrid this year for the first time. Uh, you have uh, George Mason University, you have several institutes in Prague, for instance, who have this uh, beautiful PPE program where all these famous uh, economic professors come to teach each year, and uh, plenty other places. You have also Institute Misesa, who is doing the same thing. And then you have the think tanks. And uh, when we are saying that uh, Ludwig von Mises is the last night of liberalism, so I say that uh, think tanks are soldiers of liber liberalism. So this is our poor Felicite picture, of, uh, two years old or something. There are a few members of my team. And uh, you see that we like, consider our, ourselves to be fighting for, for, for this first best uh, option for free society, for uh, less uh, state intervention and the stuff. Uh, we are trying to influence policies, like my speech will not be about Austrian economics, it will be about the connections between Austrian economics and the, and the, and the uh, policy advocacy, because uh, like academia and this education, it is a kind of long-term process uh, which can result in like developing the forces which can change the, 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 the stuff in future. And think tanks is uh, the organization that is changing things now, and which is trying to, to like step by step with increment, uh, incremental steps change the things toward, towards this, this first best. So how we are trying to influence policies is that we are obviously commenting on current economic and social uh, issues in media. Uh, we are cooperating with uh, uh, business and employers associations uh, and we are trying to improve the business environment in the country and to deregulate plenty of stuff. Uh, we are uh, present at various uh, expert groups and committees at, at uh, some ministries and we are trying to influence things also there. And we are also cooperating with other interest groups in many other fields, not only in business, uh, and try to generate the pressure on improvement, let's say the effectiveness of functioning on, of public sector, uh, eliminating excessive and useless regulation, etc., etc. Also, uh, we are kind of publishing the arguments and ideas uh, in order to influence the, 
policy makers. So we are kind of uh, preparing the pool of ideas which is somewhere, which is somewhere, and anyone, any politician can come and grab this and grab that, so everything is kind of ready. So they don't have to reinvent the wheel and do uh, plenty of mistakes they are doing now. Uh, we obviously must meet uh, these people, so we are frequently meeting with politicians and trying to e uh, explain like why they are mistaken and what should be improved. And uh, there is uh, one thing, it is political education, and, and I will come to this when I will be talking about the, uh, education. Uh, when I'm talking about the politicians and like they're often mistaken, so it is because they don't have a kind of uh, firm position. Uh, even the, let's say, opposition countries now in Slovakia, which are kind of centrist and rightist, they have a long journey, which is common, but still they are doing, uh, they are using so bad tools for achieving this goal that s sometimes they are getting lost and they are kind of harming themse themselves of, or, or the cause. And this is where Austrian economics comes. And Austrian economics is unique in a sense that it is not a kind of time dependent, it is not a situation dependent, which means that uh, despite or regardless uh, the, the development of economy, the development of the political situation and the de development of the uh, so social situation, like you still have the, the firm theory you can rely on and it provides you the 100% consistency. And this is, this is what, uh, what I think is the uh, kind of uh, behind uh, success, successful story of Ines that we are 100% consistent. And if you look uh, at our uh, comments, what, 10 years ago or something, they are still the same. And this is also what, for instance, journalists and other uh, influ influential people uh, kind of endorse and they know like uh, Ines is going to, say, to, to tell and to say this, so this is what I'm uh, going to get from Ines. So the consistency is, is uh, the uniqueness of, of Austrian economics when transformed into the policy uh, advocacy think tank work. Uh, now I will go through some of the uh, our successes in policy advocacy so that you can see like what the think tank can achieve uh, obviously, the list of l losses, the, the idea battle losses is way longer, but it is, it is the life of think tanks. So these are, these are few of our, for few of our successes. So we are behind the refusal of the first loan to Greece in Slovakia. So this was very controversial in the country. This was a very short period of one and a half year when we have a rightist government uh, in these all, what is it, 12 uh, years, and uh, this rightist government actually fell on this refusal on the first loan to Greece because, the, because Mrs. Uh, Prime Minister uh, decided to uh, connect the vote on this refusal with the, confidence, with the vote on the confidence to the government, so uh, the government fell. Uh, we also were behind the blocking the permanent VAT increase, so we made uh, or we, we passed to the, to the legislation or we um, entered uh, to the legislation the, uh, the measure that if the economic development improves, the VAT goes, uh, goes down, it decreases. Uh, we, also ch we were also able to make uh, like sub substantial changes in the, in the labor code to make it more flexible and to enable hiring and firing. Uh, now the Ministry of Economy is uh, uh, submitting so-called reform packages, like business reform packages, and INES is responsible for, let's say, 50% of these reform business uh, packages for, for the content, for the measures. Uh, in last elections, for instance, like six of eight elected parliamentary, parliamentary parties included our measures uh, into their uh, election programs before uh, elections, and three of four government parties adopted these numbers of, of points from our uh, reform program. And even four measures are present in government manifesto despite the fact that the uh, ruling social democrats uh, literally hate us. Uh, the, when the prime minister was uh, in Czech TV uh, some four or five years ago and uh, that they are these New Year's speeches on TV and the moderator challenged him with some Ines uh, comments so he instantly got red 
and he was saying like these are these anti-government politicians who who would like to cut my throat instantly and the stuff. So you you cannot imagine the better advertisement of of course. Uh, then, for instance, the reduction of construction savings, uh, uh, savings state, state subsidies, or uh, the abolishing. Like there was a there was a proposal the the minister of finance proposed a few months ago that the life insurance should be taxed by eight uh, percent tax rate. So we like we, we did a big campaign and uh, comments and discussions and the stuff, and this was reversed. Also, uh, we were able to uh, adapt or we were, able, we were able to push the adaptation of the adoption of our proposals, proposals in new strategy for hiring foreign workers. Cancellation of the tax licenses, like for one year, we had a tax on loss in Slovakia. Like every business had to pay like tax per business, like not tax per capita, but tax per business of certain amount, regardless uh, if they were making profits or losses. So we, were, we, were, we pushed for, for cancellation of this uh, nonsense tax. Uh, for instance, if you were an uh, employer, you were responsible, according to Slovak law, for illegal workers of, some, of someone whom you subcontracted. So we were also uh, able to, to get, get, get this uh, nonsense uh, legislation out. Uh, out. Uh, there are other things like introduction of one euro simple joint stock company. This was introduced into Slovak legal system. Uh, also, we were able to get off the uh, uh, health insurance uh, contribution on dividends. And uh, also, we were uh, pushing for this uh, decrease of the corporate income tax, and we were successful. And now the income, uh, the uh, CAT, the corporate tax, is 21%. Uh, also, the pensions, like pensions are are target of plenty populist, uh, po populist politicians around Europe, and you saw what happened in Hungary, you saw what happened in Poland, for instance, and also our government was trying to do something, but we were able to broader and to actually to save the, the private savings in the second pillar and to uh, enable pensioners to withdraw their fundings and their savings from, from, from this funded scheme without any limit. And also, last year, the court in Slovakia shut down Uber, for instance. So we were able to uh, pass things in the new legislation, although actually now it is in the parliament in the first reading, but there, like, it is very, very probable that it will pass the parliament. Then the sharing economy uh, platforms will, will have it easier operating in Slovakia and Uber will start again. This is the prime minister after this uh, unsuccessful vote on the confidence when the loan to Greece was, was refused. And now, like, so this is what was done and I will try to explain like what we are doing in order to make all these things happen. So this is what we do in our everyday life uh, in, in, in Ines. So obviously the core stuff is analysis. So we are doing like deep analysis, this deep sector analysis and trying to uh, understand the, 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 how, how the things work. And then upon this understanding, we are writing the policy papers and the advocacy papers. Like we are writing plenty, like we are writing like 10 uh, advocacy and policy papers per year. Uh, we also write the uh, reform proposals. We wrote several reform proposals. This is the recent uh, one, which is called Top 20. It can be reached at uh, www.top20.sk, and there are like 70 measures how to improve the business environment in Slovakia. So if you are interested, uh, you can see if something can, uh, can be adapted in Poland as well. Or you can write me if there is something uh, that happened in Poland that is worth considering, considering uh, for Slovakia. Obviously, we are organizing plenty of conferences because the conference is like super uh, opportunity to speak each other, to network, to learn from each other. So we are inviting famous reformers uh, in order to inspire our politicians. We are also speaking at other conferences, so you can see the pictures from Mont Pelerin Society uh, conference and, and, and other uh, conferences. And sometimes we are even able to challenge the prime minister speaking at the conference, which is not easy, of course, because he's a uh, difficult person, 
but uh, but but still there are opportunities where we, where we can challenge the, the prime minister then education like education is super important as all of us know uh, we not only uh, have these lectures at the universities uh, we are also organizing the seminar on Austrian economics. Uh, this year we organized the eighth one, so it was the eighth year. And it is a kind of four days uh, super intensive uh, event where we have like eight to ten uh, experts speaking on all aspects of Austrian economics. Uh, so philosophy, moral, ethics, everything. And we have, so for instance, we had my, my, Mike Munger, this lying person, is Ed Stringham from uh, American Institute for Economic Research. He's a very unconventional speaker, as you can see, lying during the speeches. Uh, we had Guido Hilsman. I don't know, I, I haven't seen him, but he's perhaps coming later. So plenty of uh, superstars speaking and teaching our elite university students. We also organize, organize plenty ad hoc public lectures in Bratislava. So when there is an interesting speaker, so we always do something for them, for many people. We organize so-called ekonomické reči. Do you understand what reči means? It's like rozpravy ekonomičné, debaty ekonomičné, reči ekonomičné. So this is very informal, like every month, like 100 people come to the bar in the evening and there are a few, one, two speakers, and they first present the issue, and then all the audience is discussing with the, with the, with the, with the presenters this, this uh, specific economic issue. Uh, we have... Uh, so-called Ines Readers Club, so on very irregular basis, but we are trying to uh, make it regular. We are discussing interesting books, so we invite people who are uh, willing to read the book, so this is the condition, otherwise you are not able, you're, you're not allowed to come, and then you can discuss this book with uh, interesting people actually are coming to this Ines Readers Club, so there are, we have people who were making the revolution in 89. We have people who are studying mathematics, physics, ethics. We have biologists there, and we are discussing interesting books. Uh, next books will be, for instance, the Bitcoin standard. So this is our October discussion. Then we have very poor education in high schools, uh, very poor education of economics in high schools. Actually, there is no education on economics in high schools. So we started with this economic Olympics, Last year, like you have plenty of contests on chemistry, biology, mathematics, and many, many others, like many others. And there is like 60 years old history of these contests, but there is none on economics. So we started on private competition. Uh, in the first year, like more than 4,000 students uh, participated in these economic Olympics from high schools from all over Slovakia, and more than 150 schools entered. So these are a few pictures from the national uh, finals because it's like three round uh, contest. So this is also the way how we can uh, kind of improve the economic education amongst the youngsters. Then this is our flagship educational project that was already uh, replicated in other countries, including Poland, thanks to a uh, wonderful organization, Forum Obywatelskiego Rozwoju. Thank you, Marek, uh, for your efforts. Uh, this is the website which is explaining to laymen, to people who, doesn't, who don't have a clue about the public finance, what the public finance is. What is it, taxation, how much the services that people are, are uh, thinking are for free, uh, are, uh, what are the real costs of, this, of these services. Everything is calculated there per capita, per working person. So you can easily see how much the government collects and how much the government spends. Uh, this is the bill for government services or receipt for government services that each year we, we create this, we print it, and we, we insert it into the uh, biggest Slovak print newspapers before the tax declaration. And it really makes people angry to see how much they pay for services they believe uh, are for free. So they can see how much they pay for education, how much they pay for healthcare, which are free in our country, how much they pay for police, how much they pay for uh, firemen, and, uh, pensions, and everything. And this was, uh, this is always a big media stuff. And as I said, it was also replicated. So in the middle, you can see the Polish one, and this is Bulgarian, and now you can have also Ukrainian, Belarusian, Austrian, I believe is uh, ready. Uh, there was even one for Iceland, for Kyrgyzstan, Georgia, and, and other countries. Uh, this is also nice, uh, nice stuff that is very popular amongst everyone. Like, 
amongst uh, journalists, amongst embassies, amongst uh, students, teachers, professionals. This is the universe of public expenditures. It is a poster that we send to everyone who, who asks for it. And it is the visualization of where the money go. So it is also proportional. So you can see where the big money go and where small money go. And it's a very useful tool for first orientation, like when somebody is talking about 50 million euro, is it much? Is it little? You look at this and you see, like you can compare with other uh, expenditures. Uh, obviously, we are doing plenty of lectures for especially teachers because we want to achieve this multiplying effect. So not only for, for students, but also for teachers to make teachers teach these things. And, and as already was said, like we received several international awards for this. Uh, we were organizing Liberty Camp, for instance, for many years, I think seven or something. And many people from these Liberty Camps became uh, successful social entrepreneurs. So let me mention uh, Fred Reder, for instance, who was with Students for Liberty, who is now with Consumer Choice Center in Brussels. Jacek Spendel, for instance, who is now uh, running these Liberty Camps in Poland and uh, also several recent members of parliament in Slovakia are uh, former students of, the, of, of these liberty camps. And now this political academy, when I was talking about the political education, like this is from my perspective the crucial stuff because we are working with politicians for 15 or 13 years and we are seeing that they, the, the level of knowledge and the level of expertise amongst the politician is decreasing. So this is really a kind of democratic, decrease or something, uh, and uh, we, we decided to, uh, to challenge this. So we created a professional educational program for professionals, so not for students or not for, L, uh, not for graduates, but for people who are professionals in, in what they do. So it, it could be either community leaders, it could be mayors of smaller or bigger cities, it could be uh, b businessmen or er entrepreneurs who's got a, a considerable track record and they have the drive and ambitions to enter politics. So we created this professional program for them, which is really also very expensive. It's the same cost as the annual budget of my uh, organization, but we have the best speakers you can imagine on these things. So the goal is to equip those participants with knowledge they need for accountable governance and for our accountable politic uh, job. So for instance, we have several prime ministers speaking there. We have the governor of uh, National Bank. We have the director or president of the uh, Council for Fiscal Responsibility. And we have plenty, plenty uh, experts on, on, on everything, including us teaching the Austrian economics. Then the publications, this is what also Institute of Mississa is doing. So we also write our own books and also do translations. I would maybe pick this green book, which is called The Bad Money. Right now the English translation is being prepared and this became a kind of Bible in Slovakia. It, it, it received the status of Bible. I don't know how it happened, but in such a small country of 5 million people, 5.4 5 million people, we are able to sell more than 7,000 copies of this book. It's like 700 pages thick. It's really thick and, and complex book explaining everything. And uh, still like 7,000 copies were sold. Like everyone wants to have it on a shelf. So perhaps they will also read it as, as, as Mikola mentioned. Uh, we have two newsletters. Uh, we obviously write many blogs and we appear on media. We are the most frequently cited uh, think tank in the country. Uh, we have like, this is the number of media appearances per year in major print, broadcast, and audio media. So this is not including the, the, the online stuff. So including the online media, we have more than 1,000 media appearances per year uh, for several, several years. So for 12 years or something, we've been the most frequently cited think tank in the country. And then obviously the stakeholder meetings. When, when you want to make politicians to uh, to, to make things happen, so you must uh, distribute the ideas to politicians. So these, these are a few pictures from the uh, Slovak parliament. You see this, this poster, this is the universe of public expenditures. She is the vice president of one political part, parliamentary political party. So these things are being discussed. We are organizing the lectures for partisan clubs in parliament, but we also do a kind of one-on-one -on -one 
consultation. So this is my brother, uh, Radovan, uh, teaching the member of parliament in our conference room. Uh, we've got other, like, we, we are kind of trying to steer the, 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 the public discourses. So obviously, all of us know that the businesses, like the, all the regulation and bureaucracy and the red tape is a big burden for businesses. So we decided to, uh, to announce and to establish the International Bureaucracy Day. So we developed the methodology for calculating the bureaucracy index, which will be now uh, published uh, for the third time, for the third year. Now we have even four international partners. So we are waiting for another to make it really international. You know why it is on uh, September 29th? What happened on this date? Exactly. Ludwig von Mises was born, the author of beautiful book, Bureaucracy. So we took this date for uh, a celebration of these heroes, entrepreneurs, and businesses who must, who must possess all this burden of, of bureaucracy. Last year we did this bureaucracy snake, so we put together all the forms that the small entrepreneur have to fill in during the year. And it was like 300 meters long, so we do all this drone stuff, filming, and so it really uh, catch, ca caught the attention. But also, we are kind of, have, you, have any of you heard of Sean Gebb? Dr. Sean Gebb from Britain, from Libertarian Alliance. So he's a kind of, uh, He's a British thinker and British Austrian economist who is writing that libertarians are losing the cultural war. Like one of the reasons why, why we are kind of failing in promoting our ideas is that when you look at the Hollywood movies, when you look at, uh, let's say, uh, pop stars or superstars like Rage Against the Machine and many, many others, so you see these leftist uh, leftist nuances and leftist things that are that are in all these uh, uh, stuff. Like you see the emotions, you see that the government or some someone uh, didn't care enough, so so the government should take more care of these poor people and the stuff. So this is perhaps, according to him, uh, one of the reasons why we are losing uh, uh, our cause. So this is why we. Uh, are also present, are starting to be present in these, these fields. Not, I'm not saying that we are producing some libertarian stuff, but at least we are trying to enter uh, this culture. It is also the way how to uh, get into other groups of stakeholders because plenty leftists are uh, somehow connected with culture. So we, for instance, had a stand at the biggest music festival in Slovakia, which is a Pohoda festival. Maybe some of you were there because this is one of the top 10 uh, festivals in Europe, in whole Europe. Uh, I also played with the ambassadors, for instance. So this is also the, the way how you can get into the other circles and the stuff. So you can see American ambassador there, you can see the Greek ambassador, Israeli ambassador, Romanian ambassador, and many others. I quit the band because they didn't want to practice. They were too lazy. It was only about the status. But now I play with the other band, which is called the Business Leaders Band. And we have the business leaders there, like uh, successful business leaders from Slovakia who did their money not on, uh, let's say, businesses with state, but, but who really became super rich uh, because of their innovation and, and their efforts. And it happens sometimes that we also play with the president. So this guy, this is Mr. Kiska, the president of Slovak Republic. And this is me playing the guitar and singing with him together. Uh, I can skip this because I, I'm sure we are, run, we are running short of time, but this is very important. Like non-profits need the support. This was not agreed, actually. This was, this was my, own, my, my own initiative, but I know from my personal experience how necessary it is to have a broad base of donors. So if you are not donating to, um, institute, to Institute Misesa, you should consider this. Even if you donate few zloty per month on a regular basis, it is not only the financial support, but it is also the moral support. It is, I think that it is even more moral support than financial because they see that they are not alone. They see they, they can feel the backup and the, the, the support. So this is why, why you should consider uh, donating to Institute Misesa. They are doing wonderful work and and I hope they'll be around for next 
uh, 15 years. Thank you.